Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a mini rant. And it's a mini rant on this just steaming pile of bullshit that is an article that I've been seeing shared all over the place on different groups and uh, in my feed. And it's from ZDNet.com and it's all about the end of Blu-ray. And this is by Stephen J. Vaughn Nichols, and I, I just when I when I first read through this, I was like, "Oh, I, I'm gonna tear this a new asshole, <laughs> like this. I'm gonna debunk this so hard, uh, you know. It, it is not gonna even know what's coming." So um, this first off, before I get deeper into this absolute horseshit of an article i i want to uh make it clear that this is not an unbiased source zdnet is a website that is directly related to like the latest technology and everything like that and i and the owner and a few other people involved with the company they have stakes in streaming technology so because of that, they are completely biased source when it comes to reporting about physical media. They want it to be dead. They don't want the competition anymore. They want, they want all the money. They want all the profit. They want the future to be streaming and streaming only. And they personally don't think there's any room for physical media. So right off the bat, this is just, this is this whole this article is just stepping off on the wrong foot and right into a pile of shit because of the fact that it's just an extremely biased source. Now, he's the, the, the gist of this article, I mean, it starts out rather innocuous, announcing that Samsung is leaving the U.S. Blu-ray player market. And then it tries to spin it as if that's proof that Blu-ray is dead. And, like, they actually say... Blu-ray is dead, which is such a, uh, I mean, what an arrogant statement to make and what an erroneous statement to make because there's no, you, you can't say that. You can't say Blu-ray is dead. I mean, if it's dead, that means it doesn't exist. They're not making any more and it, it's under the ground and it's six feet under like Laserdisc. But that's not the case. I mean, I, I got I got this used, but it's still around. Like, look, I got I, I, There's Blu-rays right here, um, and I pre-ordered a Blu-ray uh, set that's coming uh, in March uh, from uh, Eureka Entertainment. They did a a new release of Cujo, which has like a ton of features and a cool new box set and everything. And so, yeah, I mean. There, it's to me personally, Blu-ray, especially in niche uh, uh, sections of uh, the the uh, market. For instance, um, in like the horror collectors group, or just in collectors groups, period, the sales are pretty high, and it's honestly having a little bit of a renaissance. It's doing better than ever. Uh, when you look at the sales for Screen Factory and Arrow Video and places like that. But, of course, this website and this article, article could not bring those up because it would defeat the entire purpose of their article, which is a propaganda hit piece on physical media. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, now, further down into this one, after he says Blu-ray is dead, which which is just a completely dead wrong statement. Um, I remember when people said DVD is dead 10 years ago. And DVD is actually still alive and doing a pretty de doing pretty decently. Uh, there was a poll of sales for uh, physical media and like 60% of it uh, at least was DVD sales. So DVD is still making money. It's not, it's not dead yet. 
I would, I would, I, I could see it dying though in the next few years as it gets uh, replaced by Blu-ray and 4K, and so on and so forth. So th then they're trying to act like, oh well, Samsung leaving is so unprecedented or it's so rare, and that that's proof that the format's dead or it's going to die, and some somebody doing something that isn't normal doesn't mean that it's the worst case scenario uh there's a lot of instances where things have happened that are abnormal and it has turned out to be a good thing not a bad thing um and it's not like samsung is the only company that is manufacturing blu-ray players and they're not the best company either and they don't they don't manufacture the best product See, that's the key here. Like, if they manufactured a high-quality product, then maybe I would be worried. But the fact that they manufacture a half-assed, shitty product, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not really going to mourn the loss of Samsung. I'm not going to be like, wow, that sucks. That's, that's a harbinger of doom. No, that's a good thing. Because now the market isn't oversaturated with shitty Blu-ray players uh, made by Samsung. Which, because of how poor they were constructed and how cheap they are, they, by themselves, would have put a little bit of a black eye in the format to begin with. Because they made a shoddy product, and people who pay their money for a Blu-ray player and get a shoddy product and get a really just shitty experience as a result are less likely to continue with the format. So... If you ask me, Samsung taking their 37% of the market and fucking right off and allowing Sony to take the take the lead is not a bad thing at all. It's a good thing. It's a good thing for Blu-ray. Not a bad thing. Samsung also a lot of the 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 numbers are a little misleading. Because it's trying to make it, this article is trying to make it sound like it's a huge big deal. They were 37% of the market. Yeah, they're 37% of the market because they kept pumping out just really cheap products. And they had way more uh, of a selection, so to speak, of pretty much basic Blu-ray players. And they initially made a profit based on this this plan and now that the market and the consumer base has completely shifted to people who pay more attention to reviews who listen to word of mouth and uh, consumers who are more willing to spend more money to get a higher quality product that will last longer over spending less money for a, for a lesser quality product that won't last as long Samsung was not prepared for that, and therefore they have had really flagging sales with their players for quite a long time. And they announced the 4K player, and the reviews were almost unanimously negative all across the board, which really hurt their sales. And since they put a good chunk of their money into making the 4k players and trying to use the same sort of tactics that they as they did with the basic players where they make them cheap and they sell them cheap to try to get people to to buy into their bullshit and get suckered into buying uh their product because it's cheap they thought that that was going to work again but it has completely failed spectacularly with the 4k players and I don't know how much money they lost, but I, I'm guessing it was a pretty considerable amount of money. And that's why they're pulling out of the U.S. market is because their, their sales aren't very good. It's not that sales themselves of Blu-ray players are so low for every single other company that they that it doesn't it's not even worth making them anymore. Because Sony still makes a good amount of profit and so does LG. So these are all companies that still make a good enough of a profit selling these selling this particular product. The reason why is they make a high quality product. They they charge a little bit more and they make more as a result 
versus Samsung who charged less and made a lesser quality product that the new consumer base doesn't want anything to do with. Also, you can't really compare Blu-ray player sales or even Blu-ray sales to Netflix subscriptions or Hulu subscriptions or Roku sales. They're two completely different things. Um, I think the better way to compare it to is maybe the Roku, but then again, the Roku is more of a streaming service. It's a streaming platform, so you can uh, use all different types of streaming apps on it. It doesn't play any physical media, so it's 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 being sold to a complete completely different consumer than the physical media players. And with Netflix and, and Hulu, like that's not even a fair comparison. Like that that's a monthly fee. Nobody is spending uh, ninety to one hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or more on a Blu-ray player every month. So that's really not a fair comparison to compare Netflix and. Hulu and Amazon subscriptions to a Blu-ray player purchased. I mean, that's that's really not fair at all. Uh, but, you know, throwing those stats in there, of course, makes uh, streaming look so much better. And that's the whole point of this article. Now, they even try to say that Samsung had four of Amazon's 10 best-selling Blu-ray players, including the most popular model. And that's true. They did have... 10 for four of the top 10 but you look at a good chunk of the reviews for them they're not very good also they're the lower end players and the sales for those are not that high right now so they might have sold fairly well at one point in time but they're not selling that well right now and if they are selling it's because they're so cheap that's the, the samsung they were they were preying on the consumer who wanted to get into Blu-ray, but didn't have the money for the higher quality uh, players. So, if anything, Samsung was a predator, and if you ask me, it's a good thing they're out of the market. Uh, and, and I'll keep repeating that, because now people will have only, really, honestly, the best products uh, available. Except there'll be some knock, there'll be some cheaper ones too, there always will be. But now Sony will dominate more of the market, and LG might even get more of the market as well. So it's one of those things where this is this is a this is a big positive in my opinion for the format. Now I could be wrong, but for right now I think it's a good positive. This article also conveniently leaves out the fact that Sony has the number one player on that list, and also leaves out the fact that Sony has way more in the top ten. Uh, it has at least five or six in the top ten versus Samsung's four. Also, it leaves out the fact that Samsung doesn't have a single 4K player in the top ten, and Sony has two. So, uh, when it comes to the new market, which is 4K players, Sony is kicking Samsung's ass. So, um, it's not like we're losing a, a really big... Uh, chunk of the market share in that instance because Samsung's sales for the 4K players were trash because they released a trash product. Now, uh, there's uh, he goes back, he brings up some more stats. Uh, according to the Digital Entertainment Group 2018 Home Entertainment Report, we spent more than ever on video last year, $23.3 billion, up 11.5% from, from 2017. Of that, subscription streaming led by Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and Hulu took the lion's share with a 30% year-over-year rise to $12.9 billion. We also bought and rented another $4.5 billion worth of online movies and TV shows. Blu-ray, even with a growing popularity of 4K Blu-ray, movie and TV show sales only came to $4.03 billion. That's a 14.6% 4 drop from 2017. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big drop. And the reason why is the uh, consumer base is it's shifting. It's shifting in a different direction. Um, and I, 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 I don't like comparing Netflix and Amazon and all that to Blu-ray and sales to begin with because it's a completely different market. A lot of those people that are contributing to those sales, they were not buying physical media to begin with. What I've noticed is that a lot of people that were diehard blockbuster Hollywood video uh, consumers who would go to the rental store and rent the movies, 
uh, they have become diehard uh, Netflix and streaming supporters because of the convenience and because of how inexpensive it seems to be. Because it's like a monthly fee of 12 or 13 bucks a month. Um, so they have made up a big chunk of that. Now, the Amazon numbers, though, are misleading. And here's why the Amazon numbers are misleading. Because as you know, in order to get Amazon Prime video, you have to pay for Amazon Prime. And with Amazon Prime, you get the ability to buy Blu-rays and physical media from Amazon. So I, I don't I don't know if that's... Uh, I really do and, and Amazon Prime video subscriptions, like I think you can do one without Amazon Prime, but I don't, I, I, I don't, I think there's a chance, way to do that, but like most people are doing Amazon Prime. So what they're doing is they're including the Amazon Prime subscriptions into the Amazon Prime video subscriptions, and that's skewing those numbers because a lot of people who do Amazon Prime subscriptions are not just doing it for the streaming, they're doing it for the two day free shipping and the exclusive deals that you get from being an Amazon Prime customer. So yeah, that's not really, uh, so a good chunk of that 12.9 billion rise or whatever is, is going to be attributed to Amazon because they charge the mo the most versus Hulu and Netflix. And in terms of the sales dropping, I, I, I mean, it's just, that's just something that was going to eventually happen. And it's not because of the comp, because of all the different sort of things. So you can't compare home media sales uh, now to home media sales when there was no competitor, when there was no, no other way to really watch uh, films and TV shows in high enough quality. Uh, there was no streaming platforms. There were no streaming uh, channels. There was no nothing. There was just cable TV and that was it. And that was a separate thing. So... Saying that, and, and I know the sales from the year before are from around the same time, but these are just things that are going to be, that's going to continue to shift because you're going to have a lot of people who are you know, young kids, younger uh, consumers who don't give a shit about physical media because they didn't grow up with it and they don't really care about it and their parents didn't really try to make a big deal out of it. So they've been raised on Netflix and Hulu and that's what they're familiar with and the convenience is is what really uh, strikes them there's other things too involving with that because they consider it to be like a cheaper it's it's cheaper to uh do the subscriptions instead of you know buying these physical copies but if the streaming wars play out the way i think they will and you have disney with their new streaming service disney with a bigger chunk of hulu and Warner Brothers doing their own streaming service, the selection is going to get thinner and thinner when it comes to these streaming services. And because of that, the price that the consumer is going to have to pay in order to get the widest selection possible of shows and, t and movies to watch is going to go way up. And it's going to be comparable to cable packages, if not even more than that for a lot of consumers. And I think that's going to drive away a good chunk of consumers and they're going to, it's going to have, there's going to be like a little bit of a physical media sort of revival because people are going to be like, well, you know, it's technically cheaper for me to just buy these movies or these shows, have them so I can watch them whenever I want versus pay these streaming fees a close to a hundred bucks a month. So I can have the widest selection possible, which isn't even as wide as it could be. You also see a rise in piracy because that always uh, uh, coincides with stuff like that. And maybe even a revival of rental services. Because ultimately it would be cheaper for people to rent movies and shows. Versus paying for streaming services uh, so you can get all the selection. Um, but that that's a speculation on my part. But I do think that physical media sales might spike a little bit. If, if things really get out of hand when it comes to streaming and maybe even cable subscriptions. So he brings up the Roku sales and stuff like that. And that's like, you know, all right. Uh, Roku had like 33.3 million in sales in, in November of 2015. And it ro rose to 67.8 million. And I have a Roku. I really like it. My parents really like it too. 
But that's a different thing entirely. That's not a physical media player. That's a that's a different type of electronics. And also, it, it's it's not it, it it's comparable in some sense because you buy you you initially you just buy one Roku and you don't buy anything else. You don't buy another Roku a year later. Which is like what's going on with Blu-ray players. You can't compare Blu-ray players and Netflix subscriptions and other stuff like that, or even uh, sales of individual Blu-rays because. For most people, when they buy a Blu-ray player, they buy it one time. They do their research, they spend their money, and they buy it once, and they intend for it to last. At least a few years, if not even more than that. That's the intention. So, the, the sales are never going to be as high as Netflix or, or Hulu subscriptions for Blu-ray players. It's just never going to happen. Because the consumer doesn't buy a Blu-ray player every month. Um, and there are some people who buy Blu-rays every month, but they don't buy them at the same rate as, uh, people who pay for their subscriptions do. So you can do these comparisons, but it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. But anyway, um, I don't really know what else to say about this article, except don't fall for its bullshit. Blu-ray is not dead. It's still alive and kicking. Uh, in, in, like I said, in particular markets and with particular companies, it's doing better than ever. I mean, you're having like independent companies like vinegar syndrome who are making a, a good chunk of change and, and, and it's in large part because of the fact that Blu-ray is, is far from dead. Uh, and it, it's just an ignorance. It's, it's just total ignorance to suggest that the format is dead because Samsung left uh, the market in terms of making players in the United States. So, um, yeah, uh, don't worry, folks. It's not going away anytime soon. Uh, I don't think it's on its way out either. Uh, I definitely see Blu-ray being around for at least, at least another decade. I mean, DVD is still around. And it, I can see Blu-ray being around for at least another decade, if not even more than that, if uh, it still gets a good enough of uh, a consumer base that's willing to pay money to buy them, because that's ultimately what it's all about. And since studios who lease out or license or actually release the, the discs themselves get most of the profit from the sales... That's another reason why they will keep getting made because of the fact that that's more profit for the studio. Uh, they get less profit from streaming uh, uh, subscriptions or from rentals, uh, online uh, digital rentals, so um, or digital copy purchases. And that's another thing that can go away too, as evidenced by the ultraviolet thing. Ultraviolet is shutting down. So if you had your ultraviolet collection, digital locker collection, well, goodbye. You can save it right now, but yeah, it doesn't mean that it's going to be there forever. Where if you have a physical disc, as long as you have a player that can play it, you're always going to have it. It's not going to disappear into the ether. It's not going to disappear into a cloud. And when you buy a physical disc, you own it. You're not renting it for an indefinite amount of time like these other streaming services. And in the long run, if things keep going the way that I think they're going to go with streaming, it could end up saving you money because now you have those movies that you like and you love and you have those shows that you love and you can watch them whenever you want and you don't have to wait for them to show up on the streaming platform or pay for these other streaming platforms so you can be able to watch them streaming because you already have them. So you won't have to worry about that at all. And is it really that much of an inconvenience to take a disc out of the case, get up, put it into the player, and press play? Is it really that much of an inconvenience? I, I mean, apparently it is for a lot of people, because that's another reason why they do streaming over, over physical media, is because it's convenient. But I guarantee if Netflix ends up losing a good chunk of their content to Disney or their stake in Hulu... Uh, or Amazon and they're having to rely upon their original content to survive and they jack up their prices like they're thinking about doing, they're going to lose millions of subscribers and those people are not going to look at, oh, the convenience of Netflix and think that it's worth 
15 bucks a month. They're not going to look at it like that anymore. They're going to be like, well, that's now it's more than I'm willing to pay and I get less selection and I get less, t less titles to watch. So yeah, no, not going to do it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen in the next few years with Blu-ray and with DVD and with physical media and with players and stuff like that. But I'm not worried about Blu-ray dying anytime soon. Samsung, you know, good, <laughs> good riddance, good riddance to Samsung. And they're just really shitty players and, uh, good riddance to this fucking article. And this is the last time I'm ever going to look at this, this, uh, article or talk about this particular topic unless something else pops up in the near future um, but anyway thank you for watching my video and as always i will see you later see ya